In the last video, we successfully connected our VPN client to the firewall, but we couldn't get any pings through. This is the reason that this didn't work. It has to do with NAT. The reason that I show this is because it is so common. I bet that 80% of the configurations people do will not work at the first attempt because of NAT. I have created a NAT configuration like this in the firewall. This is the entire NAT configuration in the device. And this is the most common NAT configuration. We do a high NAT of our internal network, 10.0.0.0.24. And we hide that behind the interface IP address of the outside interface when traffic goes from inside to outside. This means that when I, on my outside from my VPN client, ping the internal server, the echo sent from the client to the server will go through the firewall but the return traffic from the server back to the client will hit this NAT configuration. And there will be a hide NAT so that the traffic from the server to the client will be hidden behind the interface address of the outside interface of the firewall. We need to do a NAT exemption. We need to configure the firewall to never NAT traffic between the VPN clients and the inside network. We do that, NAT, this is a twice NAT, for more details about the twice NAT configuration, please have a look at the video about twice NAT. We do a NAT inside, comma outside, source, static, inside net, inside net, destination, static, VPN clients, VPN clients. The inside net object was created before because we use that for object NAT, and the VPN clients object was also created earlier. Show run object. We have the VPN clients object here. And if we look at the NAT configuration, we can see that we now added this one. And this is before the object NAT. So this takes precedence over this one. Hopefully our ping will work now. To make sure that we will clear all current NAT sessions, we'll do a clear xlate. This command is good to add whenever you change NAT configuration in a running configuration, because it will reset all translations so that they will use the current NAT configuration for all sessions. Let's go back to the Windows machine. Now we can see that our pings from our client to the server through the VPN is working and it has been working for a while. If we start the ping again, if we look into the statistics, we will see that both lines here is being increased. We are both sending and receiving frames and bytes. The VPN is working. This was the most basic setup of the AnyConnect. In the following videos, we will look into how we can tweak this setup to uh, granular tell which traffic should be allowed, which traffic should be tunneled and not tunneled. Further on, we'll also look at how to do advanced authentication of the users connecting. This is all there is needed to set up the mandatory part. The rest is optional. The sky's the limit because there are thousands of settings you can do.